Hello and welcome back. So I thought this Sunday we'd take a little trip back in time to 1926 and look at Miss Lorraine Muller's photo play magazine. And um, if you can see her signature is really, really good handwriting. I liked the handwriting back then. So um, this, this photo play has seen better days for sure uh, the spine is worn off and the cover is detached so I'm gonna be extra careful looking through it let's see let's put it here so we can get a hope a glimpse of the magazine um, here we have an ad for um, Desire Kiss which is perfume and a perfume set and it says what gift can you choose so precious as the gift of beauty the gift that discourages fatigue as does a drop of the lovely perfume Desure Kiss, the gift that banishes weariness as does the use of Udi Toilet Desure Kiss, the gift that makes a woman enchantingly lovely as do Desure Kiss, face powder and rouge. So you can get a whole set in this decorative box. And um, as you can see, it's pretty nice. Um, this was a... Uh, a nice present to get for Christmas for your sweetheart. Um, here's some Apana toothpaste in a metal tube. Uh, look at the menu. American cooking, soft and creamy, robs the gums of the exercise they need. So basically what they're saying here is because of the soft foods that were common on the menu. Um, cheeses, gravies, sauces, and so forth that um, the gums don't get the proper um, wear that they need to stay firm. But if you use a pan of toothpaste, it has restorative properties. By the makers of salt, Hepatica, um, give it at least a month's trial. In 10 days, you can start the good work on your gums. So, um, And I'm not sure... See, for the act of mastication, these husks, these peelings, all these roughage that we are so complacently discard were meant to stimulate and stir our gums to health, to keep a plentiful supply of rich red blood and constant circulation within the walls. And, you know, logically, that seems to make sense that maybe a problem we many of us have or maybe we're having better oral care as a country because we have more roughage in our diet. Uh, another reason is because we have fluoride in our water. Um, we can't forget that. Here's uh, some movies, Old Ironsides, uh, Sorrows of Satan, uh, produced by D.W. Griffith with Adolf Menjo and Satan, Ricardo Cortez, uh, here's um, Bo Guest with uh, Ronald Coleman, The Eagle of the Sea uh, with Ricardo Cortez. We're in the Navy now with Wallace Beery and Raymond Hatton. Um, there was a time when Paramount meant so much to lovers of motion pictures, and there was never a time when it meant anything but the best show in town. Um, of course, Paramount is still, you know, now it's a streaming platform in addition to being a production company. It's one of the oldest Hollywood studios, and we get a look at some of the upcoming movies, Fine Manners. And as you can see, Miss Lorraine was checking off the movies that she watched. You see that? She watched The Quarterback. She watched The Campus Flirt, Ten Goods, and Fine Manners with Gloria Swanson, B.B. Uh, Daniels, and The Campus Flirt. So these are, this would tell you these are the kind of movies she liked to watch. So, um, and we have copyright 1926. And here's a table of contents for this photo play. Now, in, in context, Photoplay was a very, very popular magazine for young ladies back in the 20s and 30s. It, uh, in the 30s, it really became popular. As the Great Depression, it became a paper outlet you could pick up to just fantasize that you were somewhere else. Um, but in the 20s, the, the, the love and fascination of movies was really starting to kick in. Of course, there were still silent pictures in 1926. Um, and, uh, we have a lot of articles in it. There were prizes, there was chances to become models or actresses. Many, many girls dreamed of becoming an actress by the twenties. 
And before the 20s, it was still considered a vulgar profession. But um, the photo play also was doing damage control um, by making Hollywood look glamorous. As there, 1921, you had the Fatty Arbuckle scandal. You had the William Desmond Taylor scandal, Mabel Norman scandal, Mary's Mile Mentor. You had um, Wally Reed became a drug addict and died. His wife wrote a scandalous thing about how Hollywood destroyed him. Uh, by 19, in 1924, you had the Onita scandal where Thomas Ince turned up dead. So the purpose of things like photoplay was to stress the glamour of Hollywood. Arch Preserver shoes, and you see a perfect example of a 1920s lady with her hat, her outfit. A brief review of current pictures. So, uh, here's and once again, Lorraine is interacted with the magazine, and she's underlined the movies that she's seen. She saw Bardley's The Magnificent, The Barrier. She saw Beverly of Groust Arc. Um, she saw Brown of Harvard. She definitely liked collegiate movies. She saw The Clinging Vine. Um, she saw Fine Manners. She saw For Heaven's Sake. And it's interesting. We're looking at Lorraine's magazine. This is a girl who lived in 1926. And this is something... This magazine was, you know, a, a pleasant afternoon for her. Just to flip through this. Think about the movies she'd watched and the ones that she wanted to watch. So we have William Fox Pictures, Youth in Fox Pictures, and a layout of some of their stars. Olive Borden, George O'Brien, Madge Bellamy, Dolores Del Rio, who became quite famous, um, Charles Farrell, and Janet Gaynor, who also became quite famous. As we go to press, um, Universal has purchased Edna Ferber's colorful story of the Mississippi showboat. For Mary Philbin's use, Ramon Navarro is recovering from an attack of flu which held up work on the great Galeanta. Ramon Navarro ended up tragically being killed by a couple of male hustlers in the 1968. Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford have purchased an estate on Santa Monica with ocean frontage. They are going to build a $100,000 Venetian beach home furnishing it with antiques purchased on their recent visit to Italy. So Pickfair uh, was the name of their estate and the kind of like the catch phrase for talking about the, the power couple. Samuel Hopkins Adams has been signed to write original stories for famous players. Let's see. Richard Bartholomus is abroad on a short vacation. Charlie Chaplin is now cutting 288,000 feet of the circus to 7,000 feet. The comedy will not be released until New Year's. The Napoleon Josephine film co-starring Chaplin and Raquel Meller is scheduled to be started in March. Uh, William Russell, Helen Ferguson, Gilbert Rowland. Uh, Gloria Swanson. Uh, you might recognize the name. She was in um, Sunset Boulevard playing an old... Um, over you know over the hill silent film star who's kind of lost her mind a little bit john gilbert greta garbo lon cheney eleanor glenn uh eleanor glenn uh sex appeal notes eleanor glenn will make her debut as an actress in it the title of may murray's new picture is diamond handcuffs um, Eleanor Glynn, uh, it was her idea. It was her concept. The movie starred Clara Bow. Eleanor Glynn was also on board the Onita when Thomas Ince died. So we, she's one of the witnesses. Wally Beery, he actually was a suspect in the killing of, um, the manager of the Three Stooges. So along with Albert Broccoli and Pat DeChico, um, so that's a little, another Hollywood scandal. Um, he was kind of a Hollywood tough guy. Billy Boyd, King Vidor, Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase's name is now Charlie Chase. It was Charles Perrot in Los Angeles courts have legalized Chase. So he was kind of a, you know, I always felt like Charlie Chase was kind of trying to take the Charlie Chaplin vibe a little bit. The Fire Brigade, look at this color ad. My Metro Golden Mayor, MGM. 
Coming to Maze the World, the epic photo play of the heroes of peace, the fearless firefighters, never such a titanic drama. The true story of today's battle against the Red Death, endorsed and sponsored by America's firemen, it is truly called the Big Parade of Peace Times. Uh, World War One ended eight years ago, so um, so we were looking for action movies. The 1920s was an interesting time period too, because you could also say, particularly 1926, when a lot of um, the uh, lost generation was in Paris and people were cooling down from World War One. World War One was a wake up call that the world was not as peachy as people had thought, and um, this was a time period of excess. Prohibition was going on, but there was, the, what does they say, the drunks to prove it. And um, this was a time period of excess uh, that precipitated the Depression. Um, a dollar deposit from all world Bolivia, newest style Mandel fur trimming. It's great coat, looks awesome with the hat. How much do artists earn? As I was always told, and I'm married to an artist, but she's a professional artist. Um, but uh, it was uh, I was always told that uh, the artists earn the most money after they die. Of course, my wife's a graphic designer, so she uh, is doing pretty well alive, and I'm really glad for that. Uh, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Um, the Silent Lover, First National Pictures, Colleen Moore, Twinkle Toes. So you're getting a lot of great movie posters in Canada too. And we got some cyan pictures coming up, a little bit of color. Mr. and Mrs. Low Sherman in a little uh, color section. Vera Reynolds. Corrine Griffith. You know, these are worthy of, of cutting out and framing, too, or, or pinning up on your wall. Um, when I saw the Anne Frank house in Amsterdam, I noticed that she had cut out lots of pages from magazines like this and pinned them up on her wall. And this was the thing. This was what you did with these pictures. Adolf Menjo, George O'Brien. This is before you had cell phones. You didn't have a way to... And, you know, I can somewhat relate in a weird sort of way because I grew up in the 70s and 80s um, and 90s. And, you know, for most of my young adult and er, young adulthood, we didn't have any means to to just look at any picture we wanted to at any given time. We didn't have the means to um, just bring up a movie we wanted to watch or read a story. We had to go to the library to find information. We... You you could rent a movie, but and that felt like a dream, believe me. But we have so much information now; it's amazing. You have to put yourself in the shoes of what it was like to live then. Ivory soap, ninety nine and forty four ninety nine point four four percent pure, and it floats, and it also leaves scum all over the side of your tub. I'm not a big fan of ivory, but it was fun for soap carving. Um, charge account victims the fakers of Hollywood an expose of the artful lads and lasses who jip the stars oh yeah so this was already happening you know like bad management and so forth ripping them off taking their money he might be the richest, the richest man in the world D.W. Griffith. If D.W. Griffith had thought of himself first, he would be a millionaire today. Mary Pickford right here. Um, Lily and Gish. Um, these are all Dorothy Gish, Blanche Sweet, Constance Talmadge, and Richard Bartholomew. These are all pretty big stars of the 20s. Ruth Waterbury. The Truth About Breaking Into Movies by... And this is the kind of article that was probably not... I mean, this was written is for fodder, clickbait, whatever you want to call it, for, you know, particularly young ladies at that time who dreamed of becoming stars. Marjorie Williams. Uh, 
Nice babies. Just a few of the reasons why the stars believe that there's no place like home. Now, this is another thing that was the damage control. Um, because of the scandals I told you about, like Arbuckle, Mary Miles Mentor, Mabel Norman, Taylor, Thomas Ince, so forth. Um, they wanted to project an image of um, family life and wholesomeness for their stars. They didn't want you to think that the stars drank or smoked or did anything other than just be wholesome and beyond reproach in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Dustin Farnham, Earl Williams, Joan Constance... Uh, so yeah, the, the idea, and they were trying to stave off what would become the Hayes Code in 1935 when it kicked in. And you will, if you watch movies before 1935, you'll see a drastic difference, uh, between everything after 1935 because the Hayes Code had kicked in and you, these old movies before 35 were called pre-code movies. So it might be worth your time to look some up, um, Turner has Turner TCM has curated uh, DVD sets of pre-code movies, but there you can find them easily on YouTube, and you'll see that they were more. They dealt with topics that were no-nos after the Hayes Code. For example, things that could you could find in a pre-code movie would be drug use, adultery, uh, violence against police officers, um, the bad side winning. Um, women using sex to get ahead uh men committing all violent acts against women bad uh, double entendres swear words and nudity all of these things could be found in pre-code movies not any of these things can be found in post-code movies unless they were very very uh, well hidden louise brooks she lived until just recently constance bennett kareen griffith John Gilbert, King Vidor. The Little Women. Studio news and gossip, east and west. But I guarantee you none of this gossip is going to be have any bearing on anything that's truly scandalous. Um, six guests passed out from heat from birthday candles. More likely, six guests passed out from from whiskey. I'm telling you, they didn't want to talk about what was really going on. I recommend um, a movie called The Cat's Meow. Uh, if you want to, about 1920s Hollywood. It takes place in 1924, I think. And it's about the Onita scandal. And um, and it shows all this, the stars just be total degenerates. And, and I mean, with just a few exceptions, they were some very... Some, you could say some problematic imagery, not unusual to find in old books like this. Um, the quarterback, um, she checked it off. It's one of the movies she watched, and she had checked that off earlier. So Miss Lorraine went to the movies a lot. She probably paid a nickel and saw these movies, and she would check off what she'd seen. The campus flirt, we already saw that she'd checked that off. The Prince of Tempters. She definitely liked movies like this. Um, Gigolo. Um, the screen translation of Edna Ferber's story of the paid dancing partners in the Paris cafes is nothing to write home about. No doubt the censor shears had something to do with it. However, it does one thing, and that's to establish Rob La Roque. Rod gives a very fine performance, ranking... Among the best of the month. Louise Dresser is splendid in the mother role. And Jabina Rostin is the feminine interest Rod is worth seeing. So. As you can see, Ms. Lorraine likes some edgy movies here. Dave, Donald Ogden Stewart's Guide to Perfect Behavior in Hollywood. Another sort of damage control article. 
Hollywood can't exist, but it does, says Jack Barrymore, who is just getting acclimated. Uh, the stage actor, Jack Barrymore, of the Barrymore family, the same one that includes Drew. And if you watch It's a Wonderful Life, you might recognize Lionel Barrymore. And if you watch Grand Hotel, you might recognize John Barrymore. And I think Lionel was in that one, too. See, we are just a few years off the stage, and vaudeville is even still happening. There's Lincoln's assassination. Um, vaudeville is still happening to a certain extent. So, um, movies are still in their infancy. John, those engagements, says Patsy. Patsy Ruth Miller. That's a nice picture you could frame. The big boy from Berlin is here. Emil Jennings at last decides to take his chances with prohibition. Jennings speaks very little English, although he has been studying hard. At a meeting with the New York Motion Picture Writers, he had an interpreted but he had an interpreter, but when the Manhattan journalist started to wisecrack in Broadway ease, he exclaimed um, haltingly but imperatively. I am not stupid. I am intelligent. Press then for further English words. He admitted he could say cash on the table. Um, so prohibition was already hated. It, it had been in existence it, it, de facto for six years at this point, And it would go on until 1933. One of the stupidest things ever done. And it should serve as a reminder to all of us that sometimes even the government can do stupid things. And we should always remember that just because something is set in law or there's even a constitutional amendment, um, the, you know, it, it's it's stupid. The Volstead Act was just a re, re, just beyond ridiculous. And I... Don't think we're out of the woods yet on, in fact, with, um, the, with Twitter and a loud minority making demands and everything, we are definitely not out of the woods of bad decisions these days. So I would be very wary of, actually, I'm going to be curious to see what people say about the times we're living in, in 50 years. Theda Barra, look at her straddling the skeleton. That's pretty intense. Theta Barrow had a swell press agent. According to that guy, a man might be down, but he was never too far out to resist the great siren's lure. In those early Fox days, all her victims ended this way. That's a crazy picture. Let's see if I can get you a look at that. I mean, that's uh, intense. Theda Barrow did a lot of crazy... She was a very intense actress, though. Goodbye, kid. Jackie Coogan. He might recognize him from the Addams Family TV show. He played Uncle Fester. Calls for clear, fresh skin. Pond's cold cream. Also used to remove stage and screen makeup. There's Charlie Chaplin without his makeup. And Lita Gray, um, a vivid young Mexican beauty, surprised all the film colony. And Chaplin further astonished the colony by becoming a domesticated husband. How long will it last? Um, Lita was really young when Chaplin married her. He married her after she got pregnant or claimed she was pregnant. Um, and the marriage didn't work out. Uh, so. I think he married her in 1918, but um, there's one of his cute children. Uh, Jodine, his daughter, is still relatively young. He had children way as far as long as humanly possible, I think. The blonde boy from Bond Street, Ralph Forbes. And here is um, <laughs> Miss Miss uh, Lorraine filled in a blank here and wrote that that's Joan Crawford. 
and um unless joan crawford really signed that <laughs> but i think that's joan crawford in the uh in the in the picture there that would be cool if that was her signature but i'm pretty sure that that's miss lorraine's handwriting listerine the safe antiseptic Silver service for smart tables, some silverware, community plate. Uh, have you ever seen a movie called uh, Night of the, what was it called, Night of the Locust or something like that? Uh, or Day of the Locust? It was, um, there's a little kid, a child actor who dressed like that, who would torment uh, Donald Sutherland's character. And he was played by Jackie Earl Haley, but it was a very, very shocking scene. Um, I don't recommend the movie. It's extremely awful. Um extremely violent and shocking and violent in an unpleasant unsettling way not violent in a ooh like walking dead but violent in a very very unpleasant unsettling way it has donald sutherland karen black uh, a very very unpleasant movie that makes you feel kind of awful after watching it cutex uh i want to say that company still exists pompeii and lipstick Makes perfect hands, says beautiful Eleanor Boardman. A racy picture right here. They wouldn't be able to show pictures like this uh, in a few years. Temple Incense. Um, they did smoke. They called it Kef, but they did smoke uh, the drug back then. Uh, the nickname was Kef, and they would burn incense to dilute it and there's an ad for incense uh come apart of button two gives him one a pair of come aparts for his cuffs and hand decorated chest for his cigarettes that's pretty cool so he can get cufflinks that he can alternate the uh buttons on them nowadays cufflinks are so cheap you could just buy a bunch of cufflinks both blondes and brunettes prefer the Glove robe gift. Any event gloves. Treat sore throat both inside and out. Absorbing junior. Now, isn't that used for backs? Back pain? I, I'm i confused. I guess you could rub it on your throat. And maybe it would numb. But that seems... I don't know how that could help a sore throat. Then we get to some uh, brown tone. Three great stars appeared in Ben-Hur. Tell us why they admire Ben-Hur perfume. Ramon Navarro, he was so popular for this part that they actually wrote letters just addressed to Ben-Hur. As I said, he died in a terrible way. Two uh, hustlers um, uh, killed him and oh, it's pretty awful uh, how they killed him. I don't even want to say it. Um... You'll just have to look that one up. Marble cigarettes. Look at the old marble package. They lend on added charm to smoking. Dorothy Gray's scientific preparations for facial rejuvenation. Lynn and Healy. A line and Healy sax is easy to learn to play. My son gets one Christmas. Noah Beery. Uh, you get some junk jewelry here. So you can look like a movie star. Gourad's Oriental Cream. Add years of youth to your appearance. College humor on all newsstands. She's 19 now. She'll never know again the glamour of star-powdered nights. The drifting laughter of young crowds. <laughs> Rudy Valentino and Teresa Werner. 
aunt of Natasha Rambova, who was made one of the chief beneficiaries of the actor's will, because Rudy just died. Pepsodent toothpaste. There's another sore throat thing. Muco. Hmm. Blonde shampoo hair this way. The quick magic of calcium. Hard milled soap used every day keeps skin young and lovely. Gray hair treatment. Peacock shoes. Look at that interesting artwork for the ad. Golden State Limited. That's a train. Forehands, more uh, uh, talking about gum health. Genuine bare aspirin hasn't changed much. Give him this comfortable metal watch strap. Maybelline. Maybe it's, maybe she was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. The Charleston? No. The Black Bottom? No. Just a couple old-fashioned girls doing a buck and wing dance. Kiss-proof lipstick. Phenomint, the chewing laxative. <laughs> That's the one for me. <laughs> oh boy. Your character revealed by your handwriting. Sheet music. And we get some of the classified ads. And we get to the end. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. And I will see you again. I hope you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. And click the bell icon Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Until next time, bye.